Immunity is the aggregate functions that allow a living organism to fight off infection. Passive immunity refers to the immunity that a cow passes on to her calf through the colostrum. Active immunity, by opposition to passive immunity, uses the body itself to build its own defense mechanism. The calf learns how to recognize a potentially harmful agent and to develop the necessary protection. The safest way to do this is through vaccination. Vaccination can be an option to protect newborn calves against diarrhea. What is particular in such a case is that you have to work on the mother. The idea is to vaccinate the mother at the appropriate time during the latter stage of pregnancy so that the colostrum given to the calf be enriched with the specific antibodies required to protect against neonatal diarrhea. It is important to know that in the case of diarrhea, the disease might appear before the calf can develop some protection on its own. Therefore, maternal immunity, that is, passive immunity, is the best avenue to protect the calf against diarrhea. The second risk period arises around the second or third month of age, when respiratory problems take over. At a time when passive immunity has decreased significantly, you need to re-protect your animal against the main sources of animal infection, IBR, BVD, PI3, and BRSV. You want to protect the pregnancy. You want to protect the pregnant cow. You want a live calf at the end, therefore prevent abortion problems that can occur as a result of IBR or BVD. A more recent concept is fetal protection. So you want to protect the fetus against an infection by BVD and make sure it will now be born carrying this infection and become a propagating agent that can spread BVD among the herd. The difference between an inactive vaccine and a live vaccine is twofold. First, in the manufacturing process, and second, in the mode of action, which is slightly different. First, in the inactivated vaccine, the microbe, virus, or bacteria is killed. Due to the fact that it is killed when it is administered to the animal, it will require a booster shot because the animal is exposed to the agent for a shorter period of time. In the live vaccine, the agent has been kept alive in order to preserve all its properties to be able to mimic a real infection except one, that is, to actually cause a disease in the animal receiving the vaccine. Some precautions are in order, especially with regards to handling vaccines. Live vaccines must be kept alive in order to preserve their protective properties. Some of these vaccines must be protected from UV rays of the sun. In addition, any antiseptic can inactivate a live vaccine. If you purchase them ahead of time, make sure that you store them at the right temperature. You must also be careful and administer them correctly, for example, by subcutaneous or intramuscular injection. This kind of information is spelled out on the product label, which is the first thing you should refer to when using a vaccine. Inactivated vaccines in particular must not be allowed to freeze and may also be subject to contamination, especially when used in multi-dose vials. It's a little bit like a bottle of 7-Up or a fresh beer. Don't leave it in the sun. Handle it correctly and it will keep its flavor a little longer. The immunization requirements of a calf are essentially what it will need to confront the risks it will face at the beginning of its life. Those needs vary with the age of the calf. The needs of a very young calf are not the same as those of an older calf. Those needs also vary from one farm to the next, which is why it is so important to have a clear picture of the situation, to establish it in collaboration with a veterinarian in order to identify the immunization requirements of a particular herd. <laughs>